Hello everyone, welcome. It's the Fly Foot Doctor. And like the title suggests, today we're going to be talking about plantar fasciitis and some of the stretches and some of the things that you can do at home so you don't have to deal with it. If you're interested in watching that video, stay tuned. All right, welcome. And like I stated before, today we're going to be talking about plantar fasciitis and some of the things that you can do at home to try to ease the pain. I know a lot of us um, get complaints about heel pain and just pain in their heel. So let's break this down from the very beginning and start to talk about it and try to figure out how we can get to the root of it. Plantar fasciitis is inflammation of the plantar fascia, which is located at the bottom of our foot. Plantar refers to bottom and so plantar fasciitis is the inflammation of this fascia which is a tissue a very thick strong tissue um, that is at the bottom of our foot so when there's inflammation of that tissue this inflammation of that tissue has numerous causes and so sometimes you know it could just really hurt some people will complain that they have pain the first time that they're walking or the first step in the morning or if they've been sitting down and they go to move they experience severe amount of pain and they kind of have to walk on their tippy toes or walk on the ball of their foot for a little bit before they start to feel a little better and usually we call that post static dyskinesia that is a classic pathognomonic sign that you're having plantar fasciitis. If the first step you take in the morning, the first step you take after you've been sitting down hurts and continues to hurt at the same intensity or even more throughout the day, then there may be other things that we need to consider. But usually what happens is it hurts the first few steps, the first few minutes, and then it gets better after a while. All right, so what happens is after we've had micro tears in the plantar fascia, which is usually what happens when we have this inflammation, it's micro tears in that little band right there. While we're sleeping, our body regenerates, right? Our body repairs. And most importantly, the position of our foot is in plantar flexion. So it brings those tears close together. Your body's actually trying to heal. Well, when you wake up in the morning, you go to use the loo or you wake up, um, you know, in the middle of the night like that, you go to use a restroom or there's a burglar in your house or something like that. And that first step, what happens is you stretch that plantar fascia. So now this plantar fascia that was healing, this micro tear that was healing has now been re-injured again. And that's why you have that, ouch, oh my gosh, I can't walk, you know, it really hurts. So that's usually what's happening in those situations. Um, and so one of the things that we definitely recommend is as soon as you get out of, as soon as you wake up, before you even step down, you absolutely need to stretch. Biomechanically, when you go to walk, you heel strike first. So meaning your heel strikes the ground first, and then you flatten out. When you flatten out, your, body, your foot is very flexible that your bone, you kind of, you flatten out more than you normally would or more than your normal arch. Your plantar fascia, it's supposed to be semi-flexible to retain that flattening or bottoming, bottoming out. But sometimes with chronic inflammation, uh, with tightness of the Achilles tendon that is attached to the top of the heel, what could happen is if you're pretty tight in your Achilles tendon, and you go to heel strike, which is when you, you know, heel to the ground, when you walk, and you're going to the front of your foot, you're going to flatten out, but your Achilles tendon is super tight. Guess what happens? Even before you flatten out, your heel has started to come up. And now you're stretching that plantar fascia way past its limit, resulting in the micro tears, okay? So that's usually what happens or one of the causes. So if your Achilles tendon is tight, which is your Achilles tendon is made up of two muscles, the gastrocnemius muscle and the soleus muscle. So two muscles, the gastric are the two big calf muscles that you see that you admire in men or in women. The soleus is pretty hidden. You don't really see those um, and they're a little lower, but those two muscles make up the Achilles tendon. And so if your Achilles tendon is tight, that could cause and result in the plantar fasciitis, which is from micro tears in the plantar fascia. So one of the things that we have to do is stretch the Achilles ten, uh, tendon as well, and that will also help to relieve some of the stress that's been placed on the plantar fascia 
when we're walking and that's that could be causing pain one of the stretches that i definitely recommend is where you use either a scarf or a belt or a leash or just something strong you put it to the ball of your foot and you pull and when you pull what you're doing is you're pulling and stretching that plantar fascia you're trying to imitate that first step but you're trying to do it without all of your body weight on it so your body can kind of get used to that foot that movement okay you're trying to warm it up you're trying to warm the plantar fascia up so that's something that i definitely recommend i do it myself every morning with or without symptoms I do have plantar fasciitis occasionally, but I tell you ever since I started doing this, which is making sure that I stretch before I step down, like, or once I step down, I don't step down fully flat. I just step down on my tippy toes and then I just do my stretches. Then that really helps. So my, my walking or my consecutive steps do not hurt like they probably would if I don't perform that stretch. The other stretch is a toe stretch. And so what I do is I put the heel of one foot against the toes of the other foot and I pull. And what that does is literally you're performing this motion right here. And so what that does is it stretches the bottom of the foot. It stretches that plantar fascia, which is assumed this is a plantar fascia that's attached to the heel all the way up to the toes. It stretches it, it stretches it as much as possible. Again, you're simulating the same exact stretch. Before you get out of bed, another exercise that you can perform or another thing you could do is a massage, okay? So you want to massage along the plantar fascia. Remember we said the plantar fascia starts from the heel bone and extends all the way to the joints. So you wanna gently massage it. If you have a spouse, a brother, a sister, a friend, or somebody else that can do this for you, that's even good. Now, sometimes, a lot of the times, the spot where it hurts is usually right in the middle, right in the middle part of the foot. So if that area is really hurting, you, it's okay to sort of step off and not, uh, sorry, not step off, but leave that area alone and massage all around it and then slowly come around it. But if you massage all around along the plantar fascia, as well as against the plantar fascia, along the ball of the foot, then that should help before you even go stepping the first step or if you've been sitting down, you go to step. If you can, before you get out of bed in the morning, one of the things that you could do is get a lunchbox. Make sure you have frozen water that you've been freezing all day. I tell all my patients this. Take the sticker off of it, write Benji's foot water or John's foot water or Sandra's foot water. Freeze it and put it in a lunchbox by your bedside or you know somewhere that's cold. If you're, if you're balling, <laughs> you can have a freezer in your room and just leave it there. What I want you to do is to take that ice water or take that iced water bottle and massage along the plantar fascia. That does two things. So as an anti-inflammatory, the cold and the cool water will help to just kind of ease inflammation in that area. Also that hardness of the waters also helps to stretch that plan of fascia. So that's something you can do. If you're just watching TV at home, watching your favorite soap opera or something, just kind of put it down and just roll your foot, roll it across it, roll, roll, roll. Roll it in the area that it really hurts, roll it all to the, step of the, the tip of the toes. If you are diabetic, please beware, you know, we don't want to put too cold of a water, you know, wrap it around a towel or something because if you're especially a diabetic with neuropathy meaning that you can't feel or you don't have adequate sensation i don't want you to go get a, a freezer burn or an ice burn or something like that so wrap it up but just kind of roll and that will really help to stretch alternatively if you can't get ice water or cold a cold frozen bottle of water get a ball a tennis ball, any sort of firm ball that you can also roll along the plantar aspect of your foot, that will really, really help as well. If it has little spikes, not spikes, but soft, comfortable spikes, that'll really just kind of mimic the movement of, you know, your fingers across it and just kind of massage all those knots out about the bottom of your foot. If you do the stretches like really, really well, they should definitely help a majority of plantar fasciitis problems out there. 
Thank you guys for sticking with me. Again, this is this is mostly what I do. I mean, there are other things that we do, but of course at that point you're coming to see me in the office and then I would treat that. But if you have any questions, if you have any comments, leave them down below. If you liked this uh, video, please share it with your friends. Please share it with your family. We'll really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and let me know down there as well. Do you have other videos that you would like for me to make for you guys? Do you have other tips? Do you have other questions? Again, leave them down below. Thank you for sticking with the Fly Foot Doctor. Till next time, I'll see you later.